there, Tundra Nation, and welcome back to the channel. Today on Tundra Tactical, we're going to be talking about all the most recent boomer FUD and FUD adjacent events that have been happening around the industry. So sit back, move your car from under that oak tree, and let's start the show. One more Neutrogena tantrum out of you, and you're getting the gate, bud. Try me. Starting off, we have the recent ruling out of New York courts that former head of the NRA, Wayne LaPierre, our favorite person, is being held liable for financial corruption. It's almost as if the entire gun community wasn't screaming this to be the case for the better part of a decade. Old man LaPierre is being ordered to pay the nonprofit back over $5 million in misappropriated funds. That's a dang it. As of the writing of this, he's supposedly returned about a million or so dollars, but that leaves another foreign change that he still has yet to give back. Hopefully, his accounting is more accurate than his safari shooting. Looks like he's going to have to sell a mansion or two folks to take care of this debt, but on the upside for the buyer, they can probably negotiate that the house comes with a wardrobe full of designer suits. Looks like it's going to be wife beaters and sweatpants for old Wayne for the next few years. Speaking of buyers, I'm sure some fun out there would jump at the opportunity to fork over all their kids' inheritance at the chance to roll around in authentic LaPierre dirty clothes, since fuzz are constantly praising the NRA like it's some sort of god-tier organization. Why are you the way that you are? These good old boys hold up their NRA training certificates like it's a ranger tab printed on the Dead Sea Scrolls. The fact is, folks, the NRA is a dying organization, and due to Wayne's incompetency, it's dying as painfully as the elephant he tried to hunt in Africa. Anytime I go to the range and see NRA stickers on a patron's vehicle, I am going to double up on my ear pro just to avoid hearing them spout off nonsense like revolvers don't jam. What are you taking, stupid pills? While this is true in most cases, they don't jam. That's because when there is an issue with the revolver, you only find out after you pull the trigger, if you even can, causing a complete and catastrophic failure, oftentimes accompanied by injuries that cut down on attendance parties with Pamela Henderson and her five friends. God help us all. Recently, the internet has blown up with FUD memes due to the famed instructor and grandfather of modern shooting sports competition, Ken Hackathorn. If for some reason you haven't heard this yet, allow me. We've got a lot of Pied Pipers out there that are telling people, oh, you gotta have a red dot and this is the road you gotta go down. And the answer is for a self-defense gun that you use primarily at 10 yards and closer, no, you don't need that. If you want it, hey, God bless America, go by, put one on your gun. But understand, a red dot sided pistol at zero to 10 yards has no advantage over our sight. He made a video with top tier FUD brand Wilson Combat where he describes to you how red dots won't help you and aren't better than iron sights. While saying this, the Wilson personnel on video with him nods in agreement while at the same time they're trying to sell you optics ready pistols. If they really feel that way, then they're basically saying that they enjoy selling you things they don't even recommend. Hey, if you want something that comes with features the company actually believes are useful, then you should check out CMMG and their new Mark 47 Descent series available in 16 inch and now 12.5 inch variants. Combined with the zeroed muzzle devices that come standard, these are truly the next step in innovation for fans of the 7.62x39 cartridge. If that's not your style, CMMG has something for everybody from standard ARs to 22 conversion kits and heck, even the 5.7 Banshee. CMMG has all your needs for quality guns to fit any role, so go click the link in the description and get yourself an upgrade today. Oh, and don't forget to tell them Tundra sent you. Now, Ken went on to say that weapon lights are also useless, and I quote, When was the last time you needed that? Well, Ken, I needed that the last time I needed my pistol in the dark. I hope I never need my pistol in the dark, but I'm happy to have it if I do need it, and I'll be happy to be able to see. Thank you very much. Now everybody wants to be a cool kid and have all these gadgets in their gun. Okay, you carry a gun, especially if you're in the private sector. You're not a soldier. You're not you know, in law enforcement, if you carry a gun with a light on it, when's the last time you needed that? Yeah. And most people, if they're honest, will tell you, well, not really. Here in the private sector, we don't believe in carrying because we need to. We carry a pistol in case a scenario arises where we need to defend ourselves. Too many people think I haven't needed a pistol light, Therefore, I'm never going to need it. I also have never had a heart attack, but that doesn't mean I don't need to take care of my heart health. Touche, salesman. 
I mean, a similar argument would be, should people not carry medical stuff like tourniquets before because they've never needed one? According to some people, I guess the answer would be yes. This argument, honestly, is one of the most boomer things I've heard since COVID started. The irony is that Ken Hackathorn and Bill Wilson released a video in 1997 called Low Light Shooting and Flashlight Techniques. While in this video, they are demonstrating the use of a separate flashlight with the offhand, why not just have it be hands-free and get a proper grip? While he may be used to doing things the old school way with a separate flashlight in a stressful situation, having it all be together on one tool is the new mantra of instructors all over. There are entire courses dedicated on how to effectively use a weapon mounted light. You can see examples of its practical use on almost a daily basis. Ken went on to spout off the line used by everybody with zero training on the matter that with an appendix carry holster, every gun becomes a decocker. Wow, how original, a dick joke. Great job. This talk about the gun at the junk carry position. And before you tell me, I'm gonna tell you folks, remember if you carry your gun, point at your junk, real popular right, technique right now. Remember, if you do that, every pistol that you put in that carry position is a potential decocker. Okay, Boomer. He says this like every strong side holster doesn't point directly at your own leg that is full of major squirty boys. There is a danger with any type of holster if you don't have the requisite training and fail to pay attention to what you're doing. Looking at you, Tex. But that doesn't mean you can't do it safely. Fascinating. You could make the argument that flying could be dangerous unless, of course, you take the right safety precautions. That's why out of the 100,000 flights worldwide every single day, there are only 3.5 crashes a month on average. This is due to training and safety precautions. Now, we here at Tundra Tactical don't pretend to be authorities on training, and we realize that Ken has probably forgotten more than I will ever know about doctrine, but we can smell the stink of FUD lore just as good as the next semi-competent guy. Ken, I'm not roasting your stance on the subject, I'm roasting your boomer single-minded take on training. Speaking of FUD lore that stinks, Masad Ayub has a clip going around of him explaining how releasing the slide on an empty semi-auto pistol, specifically in 1911, is going to ruin and break your pistol. Don't do this. Meow. While the picking up of a round from a magazine does slow down the speed and force of the slide going into battery, if your gun can't handle the force of its own moving parts, well, then you probably don't own a quality firearm to begin with. Like we just said, we're not here to disparage either of these two firearms legends, but we will call out this nonsense whenever we see it. To the best I can understand it, this was much more true back in the original run of 1911s during the First and Second World Wars, where speedy manufacturing was more important. The desire to produce 1911s fast meant some of the modern metal and fabrication treatments just weren't done, and frames may have in fact been softer and more prone to damage. But these guns were going into harm's way, and they needed them quick. The fun fact of this is that the military's way of clearing a pistol involves dropping the slide on an empty chamber. Wow! This is literal military doctrine and it's been done this way for decades and I've seen precisely zero examples of this actually being a problem besides from the mouth of FUDs that are trying to protect their $4,000 safe queens. Meow. If you've ever had a 1911 or any other steel gun for that matter break because you dropped the slide, please let me know in the comments down below as I'm genuinely curious if anybody has any tangible evidence of this with a modern firearm. We will be the first to acknowledge that the military way isn't always the best way, but they clear more firearms on a daily basis than most of us do in a lifetime. If this was a real issue, it would have become apparent by now. Speaking of apparent, before the keen eye amongst you get the chance to comment down below on the irony of me roasting fans of the 1911 while wearing this fantastic 1911 Reject Modernity t-shirt, you gotta know the major difference is that we are joking and they are not. But if you want to be in on the joke, go ahead and pick yourself up a t-shirt. You can find a link in the description. Thanks for the support, folks. Okay, we gotta talk about Ken's implication of the private sector and how it's akin to just saying call the police and that's by implying that they're more professional and better trained to handle the situation but then we see videos online of police mag dumping multiple mags from multiple guns and hitting the target a total 
of zero times. This was evident in the recent viral video of a Florida deputy taking shots from a falling acorn, accompanied by several combat barrel rolls while screaming shots fired and I'm hit, followed by a mag dump on a handcuffed suspect locked in a patrol car. Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Luckily for the soon to be paid suspect, he was not injured from the fire from Deputy Hernandez or his acting supervisor. Yeah, you heard that right, folks. The supervisor also mag dumped into the patrol car from a completely different angle. These are the people who are supposedly more trained than the average civilian, yet the sound of an acorn hitting a car might get you and other innocent bystanders killed. But I guess that kind of makes sense since the left is constantly referring to us as gun nuts. We should probably really shake off that moniker. I'm kind of thinking lead spuds. Yeah, let's workshop that one. In light of the recent nut-based precision strike, we here at Tundra Tactical would like to remind you all that we've been trying to warn everybody about the impending squirrel apocalypse, but we haven't been taken seriously. I mean, after years of watching us and studying our behaviors, look at them, they're weaponizing PTSD by attempting to trick us into attacking each other to lessen our numbers before the full-on assault. Ladies and gentlemen, stay vigilant. Also, subscribe.